<laughs> hey, okay, so I'm gonna go through these position numbers, you know, the P123s, it's a reference points for us, you know, for me as a coach and for you too. Uh, when you're doing, you know, gosh, even doing Zoom lessons from around the country and internationally, people, I'll ask, send me a, a video and we'll discuss like where P3 is and that's when the left arm's level to the ground. So let me run through that super quick for you. I'll get this guy out of the way. Put it parallel here. So P1 is just a dress, okay? So that's simple, right? Position one is a dress. What you see on the tour all the time is they're always checking P2 over here when the shaft's level to the ground. It's parallel to where they're trying to hit it. And they're always looking at something, right? So like uh, they're looking at the club face and the, and the hand position to see if it, you know, kind of where they want the alignments. And they're also just tracing it one, one after another, right? They do it all day, every day, thousands during the year, tens of thousands, and that's P2. That's their like blankie, I call it. So position three would be when the left arm is level to the ground in the backswing. All right, it's gonna be level twice. I'll show you this, so P3 is here. And there's a certain, you know, range of arm position at P3 that's desirable. And one of them usually is not out here. So you see people taking it out here. That's not, you know, where we want to be because then you've got to move it around. And if you don't, you're just chopping. So P3, left arm level to the ground. P4 is the top. Okay, anywhere that is. P5 is left arm level to the ground again. P6 is the shaft level to the ground again. P7 is impact. P8 is arms and shaft level to the ground over on this side. And P9 is right arm level to the ground. The baseline, right here, put that down there. I bought some more shafts in this position, would be helpful. Now watch. I'm gonna put this shaft in here. Set this up at a dress. You go P1 to P2. Sorry. Go P1 to P2 like this. One more shot. Your kid will put you to work. Rotate short, rotate turn around. <coughs> and you can sit down. Right. Today's the length of the American. <laughs> Ready? Here we go. Uh, a little bit more up. And watch. When I go P1 to P2, I'm right here, and I look at my right elbow, it's still in position number two, going like this. It's like that. But when I go on this side, and P10 is the finish. Okay? So again, I'll go this way. P1 address, P2 shaft level to the ground, P3 left arm level to the ground, P4 to the top, P5 left arm level to the ground, P6 shaft level to the ground, P7 impact, P8 arm and shaft level to the ground, uh, P9 hands up about shoulder high with the recocking of the club over here, right arm straight, level to the ground, and P10 of course the finish. So that's it and that's all. So those are the P's. So the super uh, reference points um, were brought out of the golfing machine by um, Mac O'Grady in the Morad system and it's what we use in Stack and Tilt too because it's so easy to refer to, reference points, okay? There you go. So that elbow and the wrists are going like this. That's not, when we look down the line, you're really going to see it. And look where your head is going back over there. Yeah. Uh, now you're going to rent back, your head's back, and also now you're pivoting here, but now look at see this. You're losing the dorsiflexion here. You're losing the bending of the right wrist. You're overtaking the right to take it over. And you got this, the, the shaft, you got good extension. You have the height from the ground is good, and it's just above your waist. That looks good. The head's got to be borne back here. See on the other side, you're just moving your arms now. It looks good to see that. 
But these angles are too far back a little bit. Now you're trying to come up. Uh, go back to Empire one more time. Isn't it naturally when you are a little bit behind the ball, your hands are taking over and, and flip over uh, faster? My hands are going? No, uh, <laughs> generally <laughs> of yeah, all yeah, the uh, yeah. students. <laughs> If you take me down to the back, you see how my hips and the gravity are going left. All right, go to the back. Keep going. Okay. Keep going. Good. So you see the club staying in line to my left arm. Yeah. All I'm trying to do here now is rotate my hips, keep rotating my hips, and then start shifting my spine sideways and backwards. And my arms are and it's coming up to the shifting of my spine back like this. This way. This is what Hogan did in the and then the head stand down and back, right, right. So let's let's look at this picture down the line. Can we do that? So what we usually do on a four-day school: the first day, get in the classroom, go over all the stuff. Then the second day, then go get out. Then you go from like seven thirty to six o'clock, hitting golf balls. What? <laughs> what <laughs> what later, uh, later, later, later we watch some films a little bit, right? So we don't watch the kid going yeah, down the line. Where is that? And was the was the was the Okay. Let me back off some of this. Back to address. Back. Right, hold on right there. Watch it. Go back. Take it back to address. You've got a baseline, you've got your baseline over here that your shaft's got to be pointing at. Now go to P2, watch, watch what happens here. Now your hands are a little bit outside right there at P2. You're going out. Your hip and shoulder, go back to P2 again. Your hip and shoulder rotation is good. Shoulders will be 20 degrees, your hips are 10 degrees. That looks fine. But you got your right at P2. What has to happen here is that your elbow, right elbow, is in the position number two of the dress. When you go P1 or P2, it's still...